first quarter of business is to review and approve the meeting minutes for October 23rd and October 30th. <coughs> and I was not at the October 23rd meeting, so I'll abstain from that one. I beg your pardon, both October 23rd and 30th. Second. Okay, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and I'm in favor on the October 30th. Got it. Okay. Amy? Oh. Where is Amy? She's never here these days. Yeah. She's here more than I thought she'd be, actually. And I was, I was shocked to hear her voice when I called this afternoon. She's going to keep away. Uh, can you not, can not so keep my child quiet? Yeah. So much fun at work. <laughs> this is going to be a new daycare room. No, uh, she's got it. It's, 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 she's got a bassinet set up in her office. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, the kid was asleep. It was great. That's, we should do that. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> And then the payroll, the vendor of payroll warrants. Fine. Fine. Okay. Um, then uh, the third thing listed is uh, public comment. Um, is there anyone from the public here who'd like to comment on items not listed in the agenda? No? Okay. Alrighty. Well, if I go straight in order. <coughs> Uh, we have an appointment with Mr. Spagnola from Castaways for the board to review the operation of the establishment under the terms of the variance granted August 8, 2018. Oh, should we, or would we want, Dee, would you like to be here for that conversation too? Well, if you have a lot to say, I, I don't know to the person ahead of me, but I'm in and out. I want to call. Yeah. Um, yeah, so would we consider taking up uh, the town hall shed so that Dee can get home? Sure, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, and okay. So the town hall, I'll turn that over to Brian. Yeah. There was a letter related to that. So we finally received a reply from Massa Store approving the uh, placement of the shed uh, behind the Waitley, what they call the Waitley Townhouse, what we call the town hall. Uh, there's a site plan map. That's where we propose to be located. Yeah. Um, so we have Massa Store approval on the condition that. Um, so it's a 12 by 16 shed wall, seven feet in height, all will be clad with wood vertical siding, double hinge panel doors, and then the one condition um, is that it can be painted colors to match the town hall, so it would have to be white. And we've already checked in on that. Um, <coughs> so again, that was required with the preservation restriction that Mass Historic has on the property. From the grant we took, we meet, meaning that the town accepted. Um, so there's really no other barriers to this happening, assuming that the board is fine with this going forward. Um, we need to comply with setback to the zoning. We'd already, I'd already chatted yeah. with the John Hopkins, so um, we just need to file go ahead with, from the board to do this. Okay. Well, I, at this point, have no concerns. No, we've discussed it all. Yeah, my other question, do we need some kind of agreement or something, or is it just this action today that's all we take? Um, I mean, there's, there's a lease in place. You could amend the lease to include the, in, to include the shed if you wanted to. Um, other than that, it, it's kind of, it's there at, at will, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, are there any expectations that the board has? No. For the for the shed back there that we want to talk if, about. Yeah, the, I mean, if it were to fall into disrepair, they would put it back into repair, so to speak. I mean, that, but I think responsible for that. Being responsible. Yeah. And the other thing is not a permanent thing; it's, it's just placed on. Right. Uh, right. A, a move, it could be removed at any time. Right. There's not even a like my shed at my house. We dug in by a foot and put crushed well, stone down. Do that. You will do that it as has well. To be done. Right. Okay. It has to have a six inch, it, it's stone and so forth around for yeah, drainage. Right. But it, it's not like we're putting it on a foundation that right. wouldn't be able to be moved. If in unforeseen future, I can't foresee it happening, but should it, I don't want you to worry. So there's no basement with a pool table underneath. Okay. <laughs> and Brian, as far as our insurance, does it cover anything that happens to that? Um, well, we have a certificate of insurance from the yeah. Lately Historical Society. Okay, that, okay. so it's, for some reason, say it catches on fire or something, or vandalized or whatever. Our responsibility. You have insurance for that, okay. Yeah, you'll make sure that it's 
add it to the add it to it. Let's see the policy there for some other. Okay. Okay. It's on the. I'm going to a motion, I guess, was something we need to vote on. Motion. Sure. Yep. Okay, so I for a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of signing off on this storage shed, say aye. Yep, aye. Aye. Okay, great. <coughs> Thank this. you. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. We will fill it. <laughs> okay. okay. Then when we touch, when we get it there. Yeah, for a big no, we are, no, we, we've got it as big as we can go. <laughs> but we will be able to come to your step out of the central school. Okay, okay. excellent. That's my big goal. Thank you very much. Oh, you're Thanks, very welcome. Okay, so back to uh, item number four. So, uh, not sure exactly where to start on this. We we'll review the operation under the terms of the variance. And this is discussed at the October 23rd meeting, and I was not here for that meeting. But I understand that uh, what happened at that meeting was we got, we, granted a 30-day extension for one of the conditions of the variance. Am I said now? Yeah, I think there's... The conditions for the, for the license. So the conditions for the license, yeah. for the liquor license, and there's also a condition of variance on the entertainment license. So that's where we stand now. Yeah, I think there's, there's like you said, I think there's two issues here. One is... Um, under the terms of the variance that the board granted from the 24-7 police detail, uh, the licensees were going to come at the, road, was the second monthly second monthly meeting, I think, was ordered to talk about um, the operations, and that's why Jim's here, um, and to uh, just see how it's going. And then the other issue, I think, is worth discussing is, is any progress on the masonry wall, which um, isn't necessarily related to the variance, but it's an it's a issue that's going to... It's a condition. Though. It's a condition yeah. of a license that, that should also be discussed because um, we're near the end of that 30-day period, so yeah. um, we'll have some clarity as <coughs> okay. clarity moving forward. So, in terms of discussing the operations, I don't really know how we want to yeah. do it, but uh, maybe I can let Chip start. Sure, I can give a quick overview. It's it's going to be pretty simple. Um, the, the first week that they opened, uh, they opened on a Tuesday night. Um, so that Tuesday night, and then I believe it was Thursday, you guys have all the, yeah, all the laws. Have Those are the only two um, real entries into the logs, if you will. And those were, from a positive perspective, um, there was yeah. somebody that was attempting to buy drinks for the, the bartenders. They were told that they, you know, they can't yeah. buy the drinks and eventually told that they had to leave. Um, and then there was a couple of people that came in without ID, so they were refused entry, um, stopped by security, refused entry. Um, and then there was a person that was, I'm trying to find it here. So two, two intoxicated persons were stopped by security and the owner, and they were spoken to and agreed they would make arrangements to get him a ride home. Other than those things, there's been nothing, and you can see it in the logs, it literally says nothing to report or no activity, nothing happening um, for the last two weeks, two weekends that we've been there. Um, I have met with <clears throat> their security consultant, Mark DeGiacomi. I spoke with him today on the phone. Um, we have met, and I, I didn't include a letter because I hadn't spoken to him yet, but I had the two previous letters just summarizing our conversation. Um, today's conversation was similar to the last one. He didn't have anything to report for me. I didn't have anything to report for him, so there wasn't really much of a discussion. It was kind of anything from your side, nope, everything was good. Anything from your side, nope, everything was good. So there was nothing nothing to report. Um, the first meeting that I had with him, there was some discussion about um, making some additions, adding some cameras and some other, adjusting some lighting and angles of the cameras, things like that that are, that are being worked on. Other than that, that's, that's so it's not happened yet necessarily. What has not? The, uh, the, the adjustments that you talked about. They, they have, yes. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's it's kind of an ongoing thing. They're looking at getting getting cameras. They have cameras ordered. They're getting cameras and making sure they overlap and adjusting those angles. So the, they spend a lot of time adjusting the angles. 
but it's just a matter of, and Nick may have more information as far as no. you know the additional cameras coming in when those are going to be in place. Um, so those are the only. I'm trying to think, if there was. Yeah, those. Those are the only things that we had um, discussed initially, uh -huh. and there haven't been any incidents. There haven't been any calls for service. We haven't had an alarm call. 911 call, we haven't any, had any yeah. calls for service here since, since they've been opened. Yeah. So. so these people who are involved in these two incidents, are you tracking them? Do you know who they are? So if they show up again, do you know? Um, I do have a better system coming. So we're, what are we, day 20, we opened up on 1129. Um, there's some good technology out there for like ID scanners that log into the computer. It's a really expensive uh, purchase, but um, I'd be shocked if I don't have that by like, you know, first week or second week of December. But other than that, just have train security, just checking IDs. Um, if there's an issue where someone gets banned, we'll just file a trespass order or something like that. But just rolling out slowly and probably being overly cautious on, on everything. Um, but, yeah, you know, I understand. Um, I have a question for you. Sure. And then I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the gentlemen who were in there trying to sell, um, yeah. to be like my that. guess is oh, that yeah. they are not um, new to the area. Um, and I'm wondering what, if we are taking steps to see if we can track down who they are so that it's not on him to kick them out every time. It's yeah, every, everybody's aware of it. So there was there was two individuals that came in. They were in there for for a brief period of time. They came in, attempted to try to sell um, some some form of narcotic. Um, so they were refused. That we don't do that anymore, or we don't do that. That's that's not going to happen here. Um, they ended up leaving. They just they kind of left. Um, our officer didn't find out about it immediately, right then and there, to the point where he could stop them and identify them or get a plate number or anything. So. We have pictures of them. Um, we have video of them. They haven't been back that I've been made aware of. Our officers are aware of who they are. So they're kind of keeping an eye out for them to try to identify them if, if they do come back. Okay. Um, but at, as of this point, they haven't been seen again. No license plates? <clears throat> no, it nothing is. that we've been able to see. Where they parked, it, we didn't get a, we couldn't get a good, uh, you could see it, but you couldn't get a good image off of the camera to, to be able to read the plate. Is that shared with neighboring towns? I'm sorry? Do you share that with neighboring towns or do they share with you when things like that happen? Uh, but typically, if we know who the person is, if, if we know who to say, be on the lookout for them, yeah. we typically wouldn't just put a picture and say, if you see these guys around, let us know. Okay. Um, unless it's, I mean, it, they, they attempted to sell something. There wasn't necessarily, the, they, they weren't seen with drugs, there wasn't a crime actually committed where we need to, to go chase these people down, they didn't assault anybody, or there's no victim to a crime or anything like that, so so we yeah. haven't put out a mad manhunt for them. You it's think just something attempting to sell drugs is not a crime? It, it is, but I'm talking about a victim, a victim crime. They didn't assault anybody or harm anybody well, where okay. we need to find these people immediately and, and but, yeah. put them away. Um, it's, it's something that we're kind of keeping an eye, of, an eye on, see if we can um, see them coming back in. But to my knowledge, they haven't been back in. I know Nick's not going to allow them back in when they come there. We've had the discussion, their security. Um, everybody's well aware of who these guys are and they're not even going to be allowed in the door. And we're going to be notified if they, if they show up again. Because the guest, they may have frequented it in pre, under the previous ownership. Yep. I mean, they, they clearly knew where the place was. Right. They, they went in and they knew it to do house. something. Yeah. 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 So. My, my, other, my question for you is, is that, and again, it's been 35 years, 30 years since I was bartending in graduate school, so I, but I, and I do understand that it's a challenge to identify someone who has now had too many drinks until they've had too many drinks, and then it, it becomes very apparent. But when it gets to the point where someone has to be helped with a ride home, mm -hmm. escorted somewhere, et cetera, I, I'm, I, I'm guessing that was probably a couple drinks too more than they should have had before they hit that limit. And, and so I'm just wondering what, what your training has been to 
to identify people who are on the way as opposed to already there? Yeah, um, I think for that first week, I was probably just a little bit nervous, just operating, to be honest with you. But so probably really overly cautious. Um, I think they were just in there having a good time. I was probably a little bit too cautious. Like I walked outside, talked to them, it seemed fine. But the bartenders are pretty experienced and yeah. they know their job is to yeah, serve drinks, but also their eyes and ears. Security knows they're their last man as far as letting someone through that door. Um, I've been, I've called a couple cab companies through Northampton, able to get cabs out. Uber's definitely been a little bit tougher. Lyft has been tougher, um, but good cab companies in Northampton are around so long as you pay before uh, or pay over the phone. But as far as training, I haven't had any real instance. I think I was probably no, overly I'm, cautious. Yeah. Right. I'm just, I'm just saying yeah. because it, it's, the ideal is to, is to just as they are at that limit, Fine, huh? as opposed to, it's a very, I get it, I get it's hard, but, but that's the, and it's greater, but that's the ideal is to, is to get them when they're there as opposed to when they're two drinks after there. Yep. So I'm just wondering, cause I, I you know, the, the, the old, I, I shared with, with Chief, I remember the story again 30 years ago where someone kept being served because they had a ride home, they had a designated driver. It wasn't at our place, but it, and the guy stuck his head out the window on his way home and caught a bridge overhead. And the place that served him was liable because they served him too many. So I'm just, you get my point. Being overly caught, there's a, yeah. I wish I could put it into words like the art of, of mastering this fine between like over serving and someone having a good time with the ride home. But I think we've been overly cautious. I've been policing it myself. I have cab companies on standby if there's a real problem. I have no problem taking keys from someone or just or just not letting it let, like not letting someone walk out. But it hasn't been okay. hasn't been rowdy. Yeah, it hasn't. It, it just hasn't been. But we have experienced bartenders. I have to rely on them. <laughs> and um, yeah, they know. They understand the, the the historical aspect of the license transfer. They understand the impact on the town. They understand that it's our first time with the license and that we have to receive a caution. So mentally, I feel like the whole company is just on the same page as far as. Um, just rolling things out, just just nice and slow, and so far, I'm thankful. You know, everything's been has been good, but just training and reiterating to the bartenders like your last your last line of defense. You know, don't blow it, right. really. So, and I, yeah. I think the the general consensus from what I'm getting from my officers that that have done the detail there um, is even with this incident, it wasn't like the person was falling or puking in the corner because they were oh, so okay. intoxicated. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so like you said, being, more being overly cautious. But the, the general consensus that I'm getting is officers that have talked with either the bartender or security or something like that, is they're, they're all crystal crystal clear as to what his expectations are. Um, there's, there's no question what Nick's expectations are. And, and if they don't follow those expectations, they all know that their their job is going to be on the line. So, okay. I mean, even talking with the officers, it's, it's been reassuring that it's you know Nick's not just sitting up in the office like chilling out, hanging out. He's he's there. He's watching everything that's going on. He's he's working. He's working the place, and, and our our officers are noticing that and noticing that the employees all know that as well. So it's, there's no nonsense kind of things going on. It's. We also right call it. last call very early. I mean, bylaws say 12:30, no later. We've been really strict on that. I've had people come in and try to come in after last call, turn them away. It's a party of four or five people. It just doesn't matter if it's 12:30. As soon as that last call's done, it's it's done. So we've called it earlier than 12:30 a bunch of times. Um, we've wrapped up at midnight. Just just a slow, slow controlled rollout. Um, yeah, we just appreciate the the chance. I mean, we understand. So. So there's uh, the operations part, and then the next is the uh, the wall. <laughs> the wall that's uh, related to the um, conditions. The yeah. license, yeah. Right. So my right. understanding is that you closed on the sale sometime the last week of August, maybe the 26th or 27th, and you applied for a permit um, more than 90 days later, uh, November 15th, if my understanding is when you applied for the permit. Yep. 
Um, and I'm wondering. This is after getting the extension. True. But after getting the extension, you still waited 23 days to get the permit. I'm sort of. Just to put the application together. Yeah, there's there's a lot of moving parts that brick wall fits. If it was as simple as get a mason, go build it, it's done. But we're within 20 feet of some wetlands. Um, I have flag, it's basically bid right now. It's bid out to be flagged. So whoever comes in with the best quote is going to get the job to flag it. Um, they're saying that it'll be flagged within two weeks and then have to get the survey. The survey is going to determine whether we're within 20 feet of the wetlands, which I think we are. And that may trigger zoning. It's kind of everything we talked about so early on. Yeah. Might not have been prudent to start this process maybe not the last week of august but the first week of september wouldn't that be the time to start applying for the permit and i think operationally it's just not realistic just you know you're talking about construction you're talking about vendors you're I, talking about contractors right and, and all of those things take time and you had a 90-day clock ticking starting the last week of august and i guess the thing i i'm trying to to understand is you knew it would take time. You knew it would take, you know, you have to get vendors, you have to get a survey, you have mm -hmm. to do, you, and, kind of right and, on yet, time. and yet, I feel like you waited till the last minute to no, get started. The, the priority was kind of reverse in 45 years of really bad business practices and kind of, yeah, like administratively, my, my first concern after closing was the safety of all the employees and then the public. So that really, that took up a lot of my time after closing, but I feel like we're right on schedule as far as being able to close on the property. The end of August, vet contractors get quotes, have people walk the property, have people take one to two weeks to get your written quote on a price. That's just the reality I'm working with. You know, it's not, it's not about the capital, the resources to make it work, but it's just a matter of pulling together the moving parts. Um, yeah, I've had several contractors come in and walk in September. In fact, it was the the reason why we decided to open and just enroll out now as opposed to January. The, the contractor quotes were really inflated and just didn't even think they'd be able to execute. And so we wanted to avoid a situation where we're tied up with the contractor, deposits are out and they're not finished. It was just bad. So we just said, let's do some light upgrades in there and roll out. But I feel like we're right on time as far as like the wall, the mason, zoning. So, um, so you think on time, you're going to have this wall done within, I don't know, how many days left? Seven days. If, if I'm required to have the wall done in seven days and uh, well, that's what they issue the building going. permit, sure. But I feel like we all knew that we what we would trigger. We all knew we were trigger zoning. We all knew that kept for 45 years. That right. has abutted yeah. wetlands on the easterly right. side of the property within 20 feet of the setback. So right. I'm working the process. And no one's right. smoking out there right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you say we all knew this, yet I still can't get wrap my head around the fact that you waited till just last week to get the I, I'm an expert when it comes to buying real estate, property uh, management. No, I am, but, so I did, but, the timeline there is, it is what it is. It why, really is, it's what I'm operating with. Why didn't you get the building permit in September? Wasn't realistic. I had I had 45 years of really bad policy to reverse in there. It's it's not as easy as like hey closing the property, administratively get people trained, get the right people in to make the whole place work. That was a little bit. It, it, it wasn't the it wasn't the first five five things that had to do with the property. It really wasn't. It, it just it, it just wasn't. Yeah, yeah I, I, you're talking about as as a business. Yeah, yeah. That these things need to get done. But the other thing your business has to do is comply with the conditions on your license. Yeah. And I feel like you've put that a little too far down the priority list, okay. right? The, the, no, I just totally disagree because I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with for contractors and vendors. So, you know, yeah, but I, I disagree respectfully. But applying for a license, can I jump in just Go ahead, go ahead. Applying for a license, contacting, You can do those things. You can talk. You can communicate with ConCon before you talk to vendors. Before you talk to these people. When when we granted the extension two weeks ago now, three weeks, weeks. whatever it was, yeah. I said if I were you, I make that application tomorrow. And you said yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. And it didn't happen. 
didn't wasn't ready for it. We tried. But what, yeah, and I'm just dealing with realities. That, but like, what was what, you know? It doesn't matter what I say. I'm, just, I'm dealing with specific realities of the operation, and it's just like as fast as I want to get it done. I'm like I'm sitting here just being real. I, I couldn't get it done that fast. Oh, well, so why couldn't you make that call the next morning? We didn't have the plan. A, there was confusion about we're building an eight foot cinder block wall with now a steel gate door for exit out only. So there's real plans that need to get put together. It does take time to find the right person to put this plan together. It's not, if it was just a simple eight foot wall, we could do it, but I promise you, we looked into it. I wasn't really totally familiar with the entire process as far as what happens once we submit the building permit, but he came back and now I know what I need to do. I need to get this place flagged, surveyed, and then we're probably gonna trigger zoning. So, and then how would I even start work right now? It's like winter time too. So there's a whole, there's a bunch of problems to try to work out right now. I do need a little bit more time. And I feel like based off the operations of the place and, and how we're running the business, I feel like the board should, should give me uh, another courtesy, grant me another courtesy because I am putting my best foot forward. I'm not, I'm not running a bad operation. Um, everyone's pretty happy inside, inside the workplace. And right now, I'm not, I'm not a nuisance to any of the neighbors, so I do need a little bit more time. It's already set. Um, it's bid on right now as far as flagging. That should be done within two weeks, and survey will be done, so, and then. So can you help me understand, I, again, on August 23rd, 20, whatever the date was that we closed, that you closed, you had a laundry list of 30 things to do. I'm just picking a random number. Yeah, 100. Okay, yeah. Random, hypothetical number. That's right. The pieces that comply, you, you, got, you got quotes for the inside work, you got to, 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 to rehabilitate, et cetera, inside. Everything. Uh, yeah. But the wall didn't happen in that same time frame. Okay. And so I guess I'm wondering what the thought process was that you felt that you needed to dedicate your time, your team's time, whoever it was, to all the other things and not a central piece to the yeah. license. It may have been central, but optically it looked pretty simple, you know, as far as building an eight foot tall cinder block wall didn't really get into the complexity of, of triggering all of these boards and then the time. You so didn't even make the call to find out what those were. That's had other, I, I literally, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many you. crazy things that happened there over 45 years, you know? But so I had, to, I had to reverse but, but a yeah, lot, just no, even, that's what I'm asking. you'll never what see it from my perspective though. But I, I'm here to yeah. say, okay, so I don't have the wall built right now, okay? I don't have the eight foot cinder block wall up right now. I don't, it's gonna take some time. I'm gonna, we're gonna trigger zoning. I'm within 20 feet of wetlands. The property is scheduled to be flagged sometime in the next two weeks and then surveyed thereafter. That's where I'm at. I'm sorry I didn't get it done um, fast or within the first month of August. Like, I truly apologize, but extremely hard turning the ship around. I feel like, uh, sincerely, I feel like I've, I've done a pretty good job so far. The wall I will do and um, I will get through the process. I, I did drop the ball on that, so I just I, I thought it'd be a little bit simpler just to be truthful. When you're talking about building a wall, I, I just thought it'd be a little bit easier. Um, and I probably got sidetracked just putting my energy into, into other things operationally. So for that, I apologize. So if you apply for a building permit for the wall? I did apply and uh, Inspector Roberts came back, um, he said we need to submit the flagging um, with the application and then he wanted a more specific, uh, a, a more specific design um, for the fence and the door. Um, have you gotten back to him with that? Uh, nope, so that he did come back on Friday, and I've, now I've put the, the flagging in motion. It's out for bid. Um, have, should have three or four people coming down to the property uh, to, on Friday, um, and that's, that's where I'm at. So, yeah, I apologize. You know, really just probably got lost. So what are you, what are you specifically asking this board to do? Um, Based on um, based on just the past 21 days or so of operations, just to upheld my word so far, we have even better plans, and I'm just I'm hoping we can get just a little bit more time, and I can uh, it's in motion. So I admit I did drop the ball, and uh, so that's just kind of where I'm at. I do need I do need a little bit more time. So if I have what another seven days or so on this for this 30-day extension now. Um, 
again, I mean, I can come back here when this property's flagged within in two weeks if you really want to go step by step just to show them driving at home. But I, I will have the property flagged very soon. Like for what, wetlands? For the wetlands, yeah, and then the survey. And who's gonna do that? Um, I have three vendors right now. Just can show you the emails and stuff if you want. Okay, and does our Conservation Commission have to get involved in that? On the wetland flagging, I don't, I don't think so. I think what we submit um, to the building department, I think from there that's maybe where ComCom comes in. Or yeah, most likely. Yeah. The setbacks, um, we're, within, we're definitely within 20 feet of the wetlands over there. So the building department won't issue anything until they hear from ConCom? That's typically how it works. Typically, conservation will have to sign off on the building permit. Okay. So, and so in this case, if, if it's within, and it is, I think, fairly close to the, to the brook, then then it would at least be required in some intent. And that would happen within seven days? No. No, the council typically meets once a month. Once a month, so okay. And so when's their next meeting? Uh, December. Uh, okay. Early December, mid December. So then you won't get the building permit in seven days. Um, no, no. There's 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 some work that has to be done, and um, yeah, there's there's a big variable just about the process. We're definitely gonna trigger something with the setback. So um, I feel like I'm moving along pretty nicely. I did drop the ball on that? I should have attacked it probably day one. Um, I feel like I'm not a nuisance right now. Didn't the plans that you submitted to the building inspector, you, you had to have, you had to get a, 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 a building permit to do the inside work, didn't you? Did you have to get anything from the building inspector for just anything on that property walk, except for the wall? Um, electrical inspector, no, it's mostly the electrical inspector that had to come and walk the property in. And well, we, just made, we just made like lots of light changes, some light carpentry, lots of paint. Um, so you didn't need a building permit at all? No, no structural, nothing. The inspectors have been there, fireman's been there, the fire inspector's been there. The electrical inspector walked through last week just to finish up the permit. So, and again, I'm, I apologize for, 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 for kicking this thing. Again, I, I, I go back to the meeting we had three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and, I, and you were on my left, and I said, if I were you, I would make those calls tomorrow to find out how you get this process done in 30 days. I, I, I gave you my best advice having sat in this chair for 16 years. I said build, try to build a wall. That took a that, that was like, I, I didn't, went I didn't, right to the, the I didn't wood say build, Wait, stop. No, I know, stop. I, know. I didn't say build a wall. Yeah. I said make a call yep. and begin the process. Yeah. And it didn't happen. So respectfully, when you sit there and say, I think I've done everything right, you didn't even take friendly advice from someone who's 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 a licensing authority mm -hmm. and who's trying to help you out. I know, big job over there for forty-five years. I, I get that, but but what happens with with the internal? Forgive me for using this word, the cosmetic pieces inside to make it an attractive place for customers to come. That's not the concern of this board. The concern of this board are the items that were agreed to because of a lot of back and forth between this board, you, and Butters. And, and I said to you, friendly advice, do this tomorrow. I know what I'm talking about. And you said, yep, I will. And it didn't happen. Because you had other things that you felt were a bigger priority. When I'm sitting here and I'm saying, I know at the end of the day, for the 30 day extension, what you're thinking about isn't the priority. Do you think I would have the permit within 30 days if I jumped on it day one or no? I'm just curious. No, I, okay. I'm not saying, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay. What I'm saying is, is that it would have shown to me, and I, I get it, I've got my own lens. It would have shown to me that, that you were taking the items on the on the list seriously well i'm sorry blow, blow. 
No, I, I because, because I, I gave you my okay. best advice. That's okay. What do we propose for a solution right now? Because I'm, I'm, I'm here trying to really make it work. And um, yeah, from, from a business perspective, company perspective, an employee morale standard mentality, I feel like, um, yeah, I feel super happy about everything that, that's gone on. I do apologize to this board for dropping the ball on the wall. From the beginning, it was definitely, uh, it was just something tough to comply with. I thought it'd be way easier than this. Like, truthfully, I thought it'd be way easier than this. Like, I really did. I'll just ask you a question on the, on the, the masonry wall you have to build yet. That's going to be replaced existing chain link fence that's there. Yes. Yeah. How much of that is going to be within the wetland, within the 20 foot wetland area? The so chain link fence off the top of my head is is within at least um, 12 feet, maybe 15 feet, like maybe even closer. Um, so a good portion of that's going to be in the wetland. Oh, like actually on wetlands? Yeah. No, no, so none of it would be on wetlands. No, but it's if all of it will be, I think. Yeah, if it's uh, no, so none of it's actually on wetlands. Right. Um, all of it's within 20 feet. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, <coughs> so <coughs> what? I get what is Concom's role in this thing? If it's not, if it's within, not within 20 feet. No, 100 feet is. Oh, it's so 100 feet. Is it within 100 feet? Uh, uh, it's, it's a stream there, right? I guess, yeah. 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 Or wetland or whatever, yeah. Be, well, oh, okay, so within 100 feet, they have to be involved. Yeah. Well, 200 feet, they're probably involved. But they weren't involved in the stockade fence, whatever you call it. No, no stockade fence is, a, is considered a minor activity under the Wellness Protection Act. So it doesn't require CONSCOM sign off. Well, it requires CONSCOM sign off, but it doesn't require notice of intent. And have they signed off on that? The stockade fence, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So are they even aware of the other wall that needs to be built? I don't know. Okay. Are they? Um, I've only communicated with the building inspector right now. So. so okay. Because I, I, I said call Scott Jackson. Okay. Was that his name? Okay. Okay. Is that his name? In fact, I'm sure, sure we've had calls to Com Com indirectly. He'd respond. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think we all got, yeah, think we all got it. it's on the stockade fence. So originally, yeah. Where are your employees going right now to break? We actually have a great group of employees in there right now. If, if the ones that do smoke just go right out to the front. So. By the front, to find the front. Yeah, no the, more than two at a time. Yeah, we don't have, we don't have many cigarettes. What do you front. mean by the, by the front? Front door. There's like a the front door on the Christian Lane, on, going to the parking lot. Facing. Just the front door, just right out the front of the bar. Just right. smoke a cigarette. Right, there. facing into the parking lot. Parking lot, yeah. Yep. Yeah. One person smoking a cigarette out there is it's rare, but it happens. I can't stop the public from smoking. No, of course not. I can't. Well, I can't. One bartender. Listen, right now I have a lot of female employees. Um, just keeping everybody happy. Luckily, great group of entertainers who don't smoke. And and someone comes in there and they try to offer something, they tell. And I, as a, as the owner now, I can't. I'm just I'm thrilled and I'm thankful. I'm confident I can work through whatever construction issue we have right now. And uh, yeah, so uh, time and focus just went went out the door. On it just went to other other areas. So, so when and forgive me for my questions. When we talked about the the wall, that, that space, and I don't care whether you smoke or not, it was a place to go and get away from work for five minutes. In, in that, in, in that mm -hmm. wall, who cares what, what the purpose is of, of, of whatever's happening out there. But we also had a conversation about that it was a place that the public wouldn't be. Because they're not allowed back there, obviously. Mm -hmm. When, if someone needs five minutes to get fresh air or whatever. And they go out, they're, they're going out the front door where they can interact with the public. Potentially. Because the public's coming in and out, and, you know. Sure. And, I, and, I, and I'm worried about the noise factor. I mean, I'm worried about the noise factor of all this that, 
and I, I get that it hasn't happened yet, but the, isn't the potential there? What if 10 people went outside to smoke a cigarette at the bar? I mean, the employees right now, no one's smoking. I have responsible people in there. Some have kids. Um, whoever does go outside to smoke, security stays with them. We now even walk at the entertainers to their car at the end of the night, like escort, escort them to their car. So uh, people have to stay sane at work. They have to take a break. They have to get fresh air. It has, it has, has even been the slightest problem. It's, hasn't been. I generally people in there, the entertainers aren't aren't smoking. It's been freezing outside, and uh, I've been bringing food back, so everyone's just been eating and staying in the back, just like in the dressing room. So, so where where exactly is the 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 license talks about existing smoking break area, outdoor smoking break area? Where is that today? Completely, that's blocked off and that's and in sealed. the back. Okay, but you're saying they're going out in the front. Is there another area in the front where they go? Or are they just and, outside? The no, there's there's actually it's, it's been existing there forever. Um, um, if you're approaching the building, walking up to the front door, it's on the left side of the property. It's actually it's shielded off from from the street too, from Route Five and Ten, so you can't even you can't see from Route Five and Ten. But that and is a chain link. No, 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 no. No one's going out to that back at all. There's no one at the front of the building. Actually, has a upon entry has a smoking section just right to the right of the building. And it's facing it's facing 510. Uh, nope, it's actually it's facing like the Waitley End sign, just straight on the parking lot. But five and ten does run parallel this way. But yeah. there's uh, there's an L and L fence that is just it blocks it. It's a it, fence. It's, it's a vinyl plastic. Yeah, vinyl. It's been there forever. And it's an L, or is it just that one? I'm, I'm saying open. It's, it's uh, an, there's an awning over the top of it. There's a roof over the top of it, and then a wall down. I'm just, I'm yeah, just, it's an enclosed, little enclosed area. <clears throat> That's not. Um, <clears throat> I, I feel like we haven't really heard a request here. I have not heard a specific request. Um, I think we've heard a lot of discussion. I think we should get to the point, and if we have to make a decision, make a decision. But. I've not actually heard a request. May I make a request? Sure. Uh, just based on the first 30 days of the operations, um, if the board could uh, grant me another 30 day extension with uh, a report due sometime in the next couple of weeks on the flagging, um, we can definitely deliver on that. Um, but you won't have the wall up in 30 days. I will not have the wall up in 30 days. And I mean, unless there's a rare, a rare shot that they that they come, it came back as approved. Right. Um, so in essence, it's more than a 30 day extension range request. Um, yeah, actually, essentially, yeah. Right, if, if for it to be able to execute and build. So the, I don't I actually don't know how, how, how far that extension would have to go, right? So um, I'm just willing to come and update and actually just actually provide updates so and move it forward uh, I'm sorry I did drop the ball but my head's in a million different places over the last 30 days so even since August um, I thought it would be a little bit simpler if I could have 30 more days just to execute on the flagging and the survey maybe that would make make the board feel comfortable well, if, if we get an extension for whatever reason should we ask for some proof that he's doing this i mean you're going to come you could come back 30 days from now and we're going to hear the same story no i'm here i, 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 I guess, happy to show you i just didn't uh, i have a sign uh, okay reason. i know but but maybe even for the next meeting in two weeks and have it on the agenda item i'm talking yeah. to the board here now yeah uh show us something that you're moving towards building this wall show us correspondence uh, on estimates of bids or whoever you're talking to to convince us you're doing it because otherwise we're going to be back again listening to you and wondering what do we believe you did all this happen mm -hmm. yeah. i'm happy to show you right. no, I, I, I would suggest again i'm going to give you some friendly advice mm -hmm. when you bring documentation yep. it shouldn't be on your phone it should be given to us in advance for for brian to photocopy and, and Present as public because yeah. again it's a public document. It's not. It, it just doesn't work. But is, that, is that something that we would, would 
make us feel better, I guess, or, or I, moving I, in yeah, our direction. I, yeah, well, I, I, I would not vote in favor of a 30-day extension. I feel like he's had 120 days, and he has frittered away a good deal of it. So I don't think I'm, I mean, last time he gave a 30-day extension, it took him 23 days into that to actually go get a building permit. Okay? Yeah. So, so I, I'm feeling that we're not, a, you know, complying with the conditions of the license has not been a priority. I don't know how to make it a priority. But a 30-day extension is, is not something I would vote for. That's... What would you would you vote for? I, you, you, don't need, you don't necessarily need me to vote for anything. Well. Right? I can be a dissenting vote. But I, I think it, it, another 30-day extension is not warranted here. Um, and it seems better to, I don't know, give, give a five-minute extension every five minutes with an update every five minutes. I, I mean, I, at this point, I am just livid. I mean, 120 days. You had 120 days. You know, if I didn't get some, done, my building permit done and within, you know, my 120 days and I had a really heavy consequence, like my license is in danger, mm -hmm. then, you know, I, I, I deserve to have whatever happened happen. Uh, so that, I mean, it's, 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 it's just so was, layered and it's so multiple it was, perspectives. It was, you know, it's, just, it's not as clear cut as that. I mean, I'm I reversing did. 45 years of well, really crazy, crazy, crazy can practices. You tell me what that means. I have I no mean, idea what that means. We're at all the hearings for, you know, for 15 months, so I mean, take for what it yeah. is, but I feel no. like everything I've done. Can you, that, no, I, you I feel, be an example? I don't know what you no. mean by reversing 45 years of crazy, crazy. Stuff. I, mean, I, I, have, I have policies now, I've signed agreements with people, I have W-2 wages being paid, I don't have forced tip-outs. Um, I actually follow the town ordinance, I call last call when it's supposed to be called. And uh, so I feel great about but, but, all that. But, all of but you can things. kill me for this wall, which I sit here and I totally, I dropped the ball. My mind went into different places. A lot of it was public safety issues. So yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, dropped the ball. I don't feel like having a policy that complies with the law is reversing 45 years of craziness. It's just doing the right thing, okay? I, I, I guess I don't really understand why it took nearly 120 days to get the building permit application. And for something that you even said on camera, we can pull the tape. We knew this was coming. We knew it was gonna take time. And we knew, and having known all of that, yet you waited until last Friday. Yeah, not intentional, just well, you name it, payroll, employees taking care of their needs, you name it, extremely hard well, they to get a company up off the ground yeah, like I, we did in this time. So I understand. I'm, I'm here before but, but you were paying, I, I you were paying payroll the first two and a half months. Um, no, I started paying payroll when I had employees. Right. Okay. So, so that that first week is a question of my real work. estate and property management expertise, but kind of does speak for itself. I'm not, well, we're not questioning that. I'm questioning why didn't you get in there with the building inspector on September 2nd to talk about all the things you need to get done for to meet all the conditions, you know, 100 days ago. Not even 120 days ago. 100 days ago. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, to, to me, that's the lapse of judgment. And okay. I, okay. I don't think, I don't think, okay. I don't think a 30-day extension is something I would vote for, but I would not mind hearing what my fellow selectmen think. I may be more on the strict side. Brian, yeah. council. <laughs> what? Consigliere. <laughs> well. You want a sidebar? No, a sidebar. I don't. I, 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 I'm, I'm wondering. Yeah. We can give an extension, should we choose. Correct. Is, is there a gray area between an extension and changing the requirements? I mean, the, 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 the building of the wall was a condition of the license license transfer correct and it was and it directly impacts it on paper their ability to open correct they chose to open 
before the wall was ready, before one of their conditions was completed. Yes, they made the request to the board right. on October 23rd. So, I, I, I don't know what to do. I, this is, I'm, I'm just very surprised we've been having this conversation. Um, I guess I'm wondering if we just keep putting this off, is that in effect changing the conditions that we agreed to? In effect changing it because it just keeps getting put off and put off and put off. It, it, it's true that you couldn't put it off indefinitely. Well, there there would become a point where it, there, there's, no, there's no set time that, that we could point to. Right. In the so, law that says you can't extend conditions past 90 days or, or whatever. In but if you did it, of a nebulous term. If, if you did it, yes. If you if you did it for, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to speculate as to what that number would be. It's, yeah. it's not defined. It's what? It's, it's not, not defined. defined. Well, what What's clear is that you can't modify conditions in the absence of, <clears throat> uh, of a public hearing, no part of notification, and. And I sort of feel like we are, kind of changing the conditions. Because we're saying the wall's not important without a set. I mean, we sort of tried to set that date with the 30-day extension, and it didn't. Well, and the original, other, and the original, the original nine, nine, yeah. 90 days. Yeah. The original. Uh, original 90 days. About uh, 60, 30, 60. 60. 60 days. Um, okay. It, Sorry, it, it is true that days. any extension should be to a, a date certain or time period certain. And so we did that. You certainly couldn't. You certainly couldn't vote to extend it indefinitely because that would essentially be modifying the license conditions. Brian, could you look at items twenty twenty one in the license here? How does that affect? Talks about uh, having a uh, public hearing if we're to suspend a license or noncompliance. What does that kind of done? How are we dealing with that? Does that help us here or not? That's that's generic language about what would happen if they violate. Okay, so they're not in compliance with it. That, that says that we need to have hold a public hearing. It, it, this is this is true for any for any licensee that has an alcohol license or an entertainment license. Is that if they don't comply with the conditions or the laws, if you yeah. wanted to take disciplinary action, it would require a public hearing at which the licensee could present evidence. And so, it's similar to what happened earlier this summer. So, correct me if I'm wrong, just to take this. If we were to, the, the only disciplinary action we can take is to say you can't operate. And unless someone knows of any other disciplinary action, but I, I don't see a long laundry list of, of disciplinary action options. At this point, they haven't they haven't done anything that would violate their license. But as of December or November twenty whatever, they will have. I think it's twenty second or sorry. If they if they were to operate on November twenty or November whatever twenty third, then in theory they would be violent. They would be operating outside the license because you gave them a 30-day extension to right so i guess my question is is that if we were to deny an extension yes we don't have the authority to say cease and desist operations until a public hearing is held to discuss the penalties, is that or the consequences? Is that accurate? Um, that's how I would. That's how I would interpret that. Yeah. So we can either change the change the license requirements 
or give an extension until we have a public hearing another public hearing on this is that what we're saying no you can no, you can, can grant an extension tonight oh okay but we can't change the change the license conditions. without okay can't without change the conditions. conditions okay then what would happen after a public hearing for under which scenario either one well, if it's one where we're Depends proposing on. to change the conditions, then people come, they have their say, and you may or may not change the conditions. Right? If it's about operating outside of the license, then... Uh, it may be the to eliminate this condition, I guess. That's, a, I guess, possible action of a public public meeting is to eliminate that one condition. Yeah, you would not. have to notice the public hearing for the specific purpose for which the board contemplates taking action. Yeah. So if, if we were to, well, let's just say it was a disciplinary hearing, for any licensee, yeah. if it was a disciplinary hearing, um, at that hearing, you would, uh, I would recommend that the board not mo try to modify conditions of the license because you might, you, advertise it as a disciplinary hearing, not a hearing to gather input about modifying conditions. <clears throat> so I mean, uh, just to break it down really simply, I, I think the actions that the board can take tonight are you could choose to extend the, uh, the time period to um, to construct a wall. Um, you could condition that however you'd like if you want reports, progress reports, things like that, um, to a time certain. Or you could elect to take no action and your 30-day extension that you had granted would end on really the 20, uh, November 22nd and then, um, then, then the condition would be in effect which we know hasn't been met yet. So it would be up to, it would be up to Nick what they wanted to do. Um, and then if that public hearing were scheduled because of non-compliance, Then that's like a disciplinary hearing. That's a, right, right. And that's two, three weeks out, whatever it is, whatever the time frame is on that. Well, we probably, you typically want to give at least seven days notice or something right. like that. We can so. do it at our next meeting, maybe. Mm -hmm. Two weeks, sorry. Yeah. Okay, but let me ask you, Brian. Yeah. If we don't do anything, okay, and the 23rd comes. Yeah. Either the wall, the, the, the masonry wall is up or, or what? Or you can't open? If he did open, it would be in violation of, in my opinion, it would be in violation of the license. Okay. And then you document that, and then that would be evidence that the license is violated, and then you would go through a disciplinary hearing. Does the lack of access to that area impact this at all? Employee access. Say that again? Does the lack of employee access that currently exists impact this at all? I mean, if they're not allowed back there. Yeah, they're not allowed back there. Um, I, I mean, in theory, if they're not allowed back there, then I don't know what the, what the I mean, the condition, would yeah. be. The conditions don't say people have to be back there. Right, right. Your, your condition to extend the 30 days, it was a condition that nobody would be back there right. in those 30 days. So there was a condition on that extension. Yeah. Right, right. So if you, you gave that 30 days and said nobody can be back there for those 30 days. I mean that if the concern is smoke and noise, if that was the, the reason for the condition and for you have another way of keeping smoke and noise out of that area, then it would impact it that way. See, and I admittedly was thinking smoke and noise and, I'm, and the butters were thinking smoke and noise, not just in that area, but 
oh, because again, employees should have a place to go. And again, I don't care whether they smoke or not. A place is just, we agree on that. It's just to get outside of some fresh air for five minutes. It's a confined area. It's, you know, it's work. We all need that. Okay. But what, what we've been hearing so far today is, I guess I'll say I don't think that this condition can be met by next what Thursday. So, no, so this Saturday, this, really. Or, this is the twentieth. Even on the twentieth. Okay. October 20th, by so. Saturday. Okay. Uh, by Saturday. So, do we just uh, take some action today, or do we meet again at a, when the condition isn't met on the following what Monday to take an action? I mean, we're going to take some action one way or another, don't we? At some point. At some point, yeah. And if yeah, we wait till next going. week, is that is that going to change anything? Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, yes. it affects his it affects his ability to. Well, assuming they want to comply with the license, which I don't have any reason to think that they wouldn't, then then yeah. they wouldn't operate. And they wouldn't operate. They wouldn't be able to operate those days. Okay, so we're talking what Saturday is the only day you're not open Monday. Are you open Tuesdays? I'm open I, at the moment. I'm not open Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. So we're talking of, of impacting you on Saturday. On Saturday, if we don't meet until we don't meet until that December fourth, right? So or, that's like a week and a half. Right. Okay. So, or, well, four days and call it six days. Quite honestly, I'm not sure what additional information you can get in that short period of time mm -hmm. you're getting from, yeah. that you don't already know tonight. Confirm up all the correspondence that I have submitted. Mm -hmm. And there are just a lot of unknowns. You know, I, I, I'm leaning towards my. Not my final, but leaning towards seeing the correspondence and actions he's taken before our next meeting and decide at that meeting whether he's actually moving forward on this or just dragging feet and we're going to be months down the road before it's met. So I guess giving him another two weeks till our next meeting. So you're suggesting that you would extend it to December 4th? Right. In what? Provided he gives us documentation that he's moving forward on building the wall. Whatever whatever that is, whatever he has, emails, agreements, invoices, or estimates, or whatever. Well, Fred, I think if you're going to do that, I think you need to express, and this is for, to his benefit, so he knows what he's got to come up with. Okay. What, 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 what's the... What, what are the milestones that need to be achieved if you're going to do that? It can't be open-ended because then he doesn't have a, a, a mark. Okay. Well, first off, are you agreeable to something like that? I don't know yet either. I'm, I'm listening. And, and again, I'm not, I know a process of finding out what I don't know, but I don't know how long this process is going to take. I mean, that's, that's the frustration that I've had before. Yeah. I, I just find out how long it's going to take from day one. Okay. A well-researched timeline. Not a timeline that's, well, maybe this will happen, maybe that will happen, but a really well-researched timeline. Because the earliest we can get to ConCom is this. And if that happens, this is my timeline. Okay. And the early, it, it, I mean, it's, it, if it, if it was my building, I know I'd be all over that, trying to get it to happen. I mean, I know that, and again, it's not the same, but it's kind of the same. And I'll just use the recent example of, of building a softball field where we were just moving dirt. The engineer that I hired, and the town hired, laid out the exact calendar on how this would happen. He communicated with Scott, he, you know, and, and he could tell us exactly when things were going to happen. And it was pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. 
and and there was a plan. Yeah. Okay. So Joyce, if you're proposing this timeline, when when would you want to see this? Uh, I don't know. Six weeks ago. Okay. Well, <laughs> I mean. I know that's not enough no. because I don't have a time machine. So when do we want it? Tomorrow? I mean, in, in a half hour? I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, at, at a minimum, I think you get a signed agreement with a wetlands consultant, correct? There's no. That's not time dependent on anything except. Yeah, this, we talked about this last time. Um, yeah, right now I just have the flagger set and the civil engineer for the survey. Um, for the wetland survey? Yeah. Um, the wetland delineation or no? It is, yeah, wetland delineation. First it's flagged, then the surveyor comes up. Um, I have a couple of consultants. I have the correspondence. They actually referred me to the surveyor and the flaggers. Um, I'm not sure if I want to retain them for for big money right now. I want, I'd like to get through the flagging and the and the survey, but if I have to, to make the board feel comfortable, um, yeah, no, no doubt we will. It just I'd like to I'd like to get through the process. Um, Can I make yeah. a suggestion? And I know yeah, and I do I do take your request. Like I really do. I didn't yeah. just blow you off last time. I really didn't. So I, the the engineer will be able to understand what the flagging is, is hap what's, what's happening with the flagging, et cetera, much better than you are because they're an expert on environmental stuff. And though you're an expert on real estate, you're not an expert on environmental stuff, nor am I. They will be able to spell out a, a pretty good calendar of milestones that are realistic to achieve in Thailand. I think that if you don't spend that money, mm -hmm. I, I think you're taking a risk that you're gonna come back here and not have answers to questions that we might have. Um, and I think that that engineer that you hire, if we grant this, should be with you at the next meeting. Again, I would, just because I'm not an environmental person. I agree. So if you hired <clears throat> X engineering company, environmental engineering company, tomorrow, I like tomorrow's. Good and, afternoon is okay. Right. Um, and as a requirement of that, and again, they're busy, I'm sure. You met them at the, at, the, at the castaways and said, okay, here's what we have to do. I, I think from my perspective, if we were to go with this, a timeline laid out by an environmental engineer would make me a lot more comfortable than a timeline laid out by a, a, an optimistic businessman. Yeah, and that's not an that's not an indictment on being an optimistic businessman. It just well, it's got to be optimistic. Okay. I, I am. Uh, I can pull together all of, all of our correspondence and hopefully tomorrow have a signed agreement. But I am emails deep um, with a couple of good consultants who referred some awesome wetlands flaggers. I, I just I, I, we used SBE Associates. Um, I like SBE. Had a deal with them on the farm. Just kind of, you know. Okay, well, man. I'm it's just, like, so I'm just. I have a name. I'd fl can I float a name or no? I, I, mean, I don't know. Okay. So, I mean, feel free. But, uh, yeah. I, I, I guess we can't really make recommendations. No, we really can't. I, I would just, yeah. yeah. But that that would make me feel more comfortable that it's a timeline that an expert in the field thought was, because that expert will call <laughs> Scott. That expert will call the flaggers. That expert will call all the other stakeholders and get a sense from them as to when they think things can happen and they will happen in a certain order obviously and that's something that you can't do no offense you just don't have the skill set nor do i mean okay, so when do we that want this by the next meeting or tell scott we need it i don't know i think that's our next meeting is probably the most reasonable 
you think we should have do you think we should have the paperwork prior to so we can discuss I, I want paperwork in advance. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to see it at the meeting up in seven days or so for, for paperwork. What's it got? Just to get through the weekend? Okay. Well it's Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving. Wednesday. Your meeting is December fourth. Your next yeah. meeting is December fourth. Right. So a week before the meeting is the day before Thanksgiving. And then, uh, yeah, realistically, for Thanksgiving. Yeah, because realistically, you, if you wait, then it's not going to happen because of Thanksgiving. Yeah. You so you um, package up the correspondence, the firm agreement, send it over to email for town admin, ASAP. I, the, not just the correspondence, yeah. but the, the 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 plan from the engineer. Okay. Okay. Um, does, does that make sense to? I mean, basically, you, here's your chance to convince us that before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I'm sorry. The plan for the engineer before Thanksgiving is that a timeline. Okay. Okay. From the engineer, signed by the engineer, not not the not a bunch of email correspondence, but a plan signed by the engineer saying this is whatever the engineer is comfortable putting right. on paper. I mean, you need a complete roadmap yeah, from him. Is, with this, yeah, this is your chance yeah. to convince us that you've got your poop in a group, as my sister-in-law would say, yes, that you've got your poop in a group on this and that you're not going to wait another 60 some odd days to take the next action. No, that's, I mean, it, I, I think we, that point has been made. And you want this to look at wetlands. I mean, the other, the, the other, the other possible hang-up could be zoning as well, so. Why well, zone? Well, but again, isn't the because you were talking about setback issues? Yeah. So from property boundaries, setback issues. So I, I mean, I, I guess I, I'm not. I, I'm I'm willing to <coughs> let it get us a plan. I don't think an indefinite set of extensions is probably in the best interest of everybody concerned. So I'm not saying that in the future it won't be like you got to get it done. And if we if you have to close down in order to get it done, then that's for some short period of time. Then fine. I'm not saying that that I'm ruling that out in the future. Right. But I think <clears throat> if we're willing to go to our next meeting to get something more concrete, because I, I agree, I don't want to come back every 30 days and find out it's going to be another 30 days, another 30 days, and time is getting twittered away. Yeah. So you know. What does the building inspector feel needs to happen? Are there zoning issues? What's the timeline on, on wetlands yeah. engineering? All, all that kind of stuff, just. Yeah, I think probably those are the three big ones. So what does the building inspector want? What is the conservation want? What is the uh, zoning? Um, if there's gonna be a need for a zoning variance, I wanna know about that. Yeah, and then an attempt to create a, because there, if there's a variance needed, that's a hearing involved. Yep. And when's the soonest that, that hearing could be scheduled? Coscom will hearing. What's that? Coscom will likely be a hearing. Both, both will, would have hearings, right. And yeah. both of them usually typically meet once a month. So. Yeah. Yeah. Zoning's not until, well, ZBA's not until January now. Will the ZBA or will be zoning? It'll be ZBA. ZBA, yeah, yeah. They're already scheduled for next week. Or December meeting. They have two weeks. Yeah. Can they advertising? Oh, they have two weeks ever now. Yeah. All right, you get the point. I mean, yeah, I'm embarrassed for the update I, I provided for the board. Truthfully, um, I I know exactly what you need right now. Um, okay, so. Do do we still want to see some yeah, really correspondence and then uh, uh, contacting uh, contractors and, or getting estimates to see that? something is being done rather than just waiting for all these no. committees to act? No, I mean, we're going to hear from him in a week with all kinds of supporting material and a timeline. Mm -hmm. And it may uh, be that the, that timeline won't be complete, but it better be by two weeks, because then we've got, I mean, we, <coughs> we have to know he's really addressing all the things that are going to be needed. I don't want to find out that we know <coughs> there could be a variance. Right? We've known that probably since August 26th. Why is it November? And that's not, there's been no action on that. And, and on top of that, I would add that 
to Fred's point, I think, in addition to the alphabet soup of regulatory authorities, making sure that whoever's going to do the actual work is not scheduled out until next May. Right. That they can move at the time that is indicated as realistic by the different regulatory authorities when their job is done. So when their job is done, can whoever is contracted to do the work get a shovel in the ground quickly? Mm -hmm. so, right. Yeah. And rather than waiting to get proposals and whatever then, so. Because I can't imagine we're going to be happy with, oh yeah, it turns out the contractors are booked until May. Yeah, was, yeah the initial trouble was the first first round, the first wave of the rental, but um, for the building permit, I put the price of the wall, the estimate, so building that part is trying to get there. Um, lackluster update without a lot of milestones for me, but I feel like um, I feel like I can get exactly what the board wants um, in a short time. Sure, it's up to you now to make a motion of some kind, or do you want us to? I didn't entertain a motion from, from anybody. It should contain you know, like a date certain or a time period certain. Mm -hmm. Date okay. certain makes sense to me since we're going our next meeting this. Okay. Which is December 4th. Okay, I'll make a motion that by November, what, 27th? Yeah. 27th, yeah. That we receive a timeline of what is needed to, from an environmental engineer to comply with the requirement for a masonry wall yeah, or smoking the area, the yeah. conditions of masonry wall. And, uh, okay. And, and some uh, information on moving forward getting estimates for constructing the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah, time on. Okay. Zoning has to be part of that as well. Right, zoning, yeah. okay. And a sense of, of whether a yeah. variance is going to be necessary. Yeah. I don't know how you find that out necessarily. I think it can be done. It can, yeah, yeah, I don't know. So, so that information in a week, and then we, do they, have, do they have an extension to operate until December 4th? I will give them that extension to operate. But there won't be another, if we're not happy with what they provide, there won't be another extension. Are you continuing the condition that nobody be allowed back there? Yes. Okay. And then I would ask your guys to report back what kind of noise level was out front. Yeah, <clears throat> we, haven't, we haven't seen more. I, I get that, I, I appreciate yet. that. I really so do. So we have been watching it though. Because I am impressed with the operation so far. I appreciate that. I that means a lot. That means a lot. I am. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that. We'll continue to watch that. Yeah. Okay, so Brian, do you want to read back with the... No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, do the, let me do the easy one first. Okay. So there was a motion to extend the time, essentially <clears throat> extend time to complete the, complete the masonry wall until 12.04.19 on the condition that nobody be allowed in the rear uh, break area. That's one motion, right? And you're also requesting that you receive um, documentation by November 27th yeah. of um, time of information, of information and schedule related to wetlands permitting, zoning, and any other input, 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 input from the building inspector. Okay. Written information. Yep. Okay. Receive written documentation. Okay. So the request is, is simply made. We don't need to vote on the request. 
Right. Um, you should vote on the extension. But we should vote on the yeah. extension. Our, our, our contractor, is a contractor update in there as well in terms of correspondence? Bids out, timeline, availability of the contractor based upon lessons learned from the regulatory authorities. How about and any other supporting information or progress? That might be helpful, yeah. Yeah. yeah but the zoning, you get my point the zoning, zoning and the, the, zoning and the, uh, the con uh, conservation Those are, gonna are going to be the ones. Right. Those are the okay. possible yeah. barriers that, that could delay the longest. And that's it. And Time, but, but I mean, that's assuming that a variance could be granted. Um, if a variance isn't granted, then we'd have to come back and we'd be looking at modifying conditions. So, yeah. but we don't have to. We don't. Well, yeah, we, we don't. don't get, we don't get there till we. We don't get there till we get, get there. there. So. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So we have a motion to uh, extend the extension to December fourth, with the previous conditions of folks aren't to be back there. Uh, with the understanding that will be provided uh, a large amount of information by next week so we, we have a better way to judge things moving forward from December 4th. Okay? Okay. All of those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Are you guys open Thanksgiving for his officers? We're closed uh, Thanksgiving Day. We were open the night before. Um, Okay. I was going to think it was going to be difficult to find details, but that we can go. Okay. Friday, so. All right. But, no. <clears throat> um, All right. Well, we've got a real agenda, as you can see. You're welcome to stay for that. Uh, manage a bar now. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Good. Yeah. All right. The next Take item care. is under, thanks, Jim. Under all business here is uh, to review and discuss the preliminary design for the sidewalk reconstruction on Chestnut Plain Road and set a date for a public and stakeholders meeting. So I don't, I don't know, yeah. we don't really get into this in too much detail tonight, but I wanted to let you know that um, Keith, myself, Sarah Campbell, who's the engineer at Engine Clock Met, and that was what we considered kind of the thorniest issue as to how this would go how the sidewalks would interact or interface with the area in front of the Whaley Inn. Um, what we had talked about was um, bumping the sidewalks closer to the road. Um, let me back up for one second. Yeah, I've got, yeah, looking from the uh, triangle intersection. You want to start down there? So this is this is split. This would be a match line over here. So this line and this line. OK, yeah, good. That's, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I thought was. Yep. Um, the proposal is yeah. to bump those out to sort of where the existing uh, as uh, the asphalt curbing is there's kind of a kind of drab looking sometimes yeah. grass crab grass dirt yeah. uh, island there um, move the sidewalks closer to there that's on the east side on the east side yes yeah. uh, the side actually closer to the road it looks like on the west side they would maintain kind of a, a bit of a distance from the road yep so the west side there's um, when Sarah went out and walked in, and we walked it with her once, there's not a lot of issues with tree roots there. Um, yeah. But we all know that where the existing sidewalk is on the east side, east side. right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of issues with tree roots, and um, it's really right up against the property, uh, the property boundaries. So there's not a lot of space. Um, so the proposal is to move it on the other side of the tree belt between the uh, Chestnut Plain Road and those yeah. trees, staying far enough away from the trees so it gets us closer to the road um, to stay outside of um, what they call the rain circles or whatever that is, yeah. where you can see where the roots you typically end on trees is yeah. where the where the drip line is. Um, so to have them closer to the road, it would require extending. You can see here, there's we'd have to extend where there are walks. We'd have to, from from the essentially from the houses from the property boundary down to the sidewalks to yeah. make sure we have connectivity there. Um, this also shows the locations of crosswalks. Um, one of the questions, you know, there's a little bit of concern about this crosswalk, 
The one um, that you can hardly see until you get around the corner. At Christian Lane and North right. Road, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. people yeah. have yeah. problems navigating that intersection without people trying people to walk. Right. But that's something we can talk about. Um, yeah, did this is this going to include the, kind of the narrowing of the road a bit there at the crosswalks to slow traffic? Um, as it's planned now, no, there would not be any sort of pedestrian bump outs. Um, is there a reason why? Um, it, it what I I'm not sure it wasn't discussed. Uh, okay, I thought it was part of the complete streets that we had talked about. Um, narrowing the road for the crosswalks, I like in Florence where they the, where they yeah. put in the new crosswalks. The sidewalk comes out so that the basically it's more of a speed control. It doesn't matter whether there's a pedestrian there. When you narrow the road, it lets people will slow down right. in response to that voluntarily more so than obeying a speed limit sign. But I think that so make the road and paint the lines on the road as well so that the road appears yeah. narrower to cars, and that the driver's response will be to slow down uh, in those situations. But I think the crosswalk is just going to be painted yes. by, or something flat on the surface. So. That's proposed. Yeah. yeah, so to answer Joyce's question, that, that wasn't discussed. Um, okay. And yeah, I think they're just, they're going to be painted. I mean, we, we can we discuss it and sure. put something like that on the table for some of these cross Because I, I would have the, that same concern mm -hmm. about this. Mm -hmm. And if there's nothing done to kind of slow the traffic, then... Right. That will be a problem. Okay. Yeah, there should be something where you can that you can push and lights start to flash. Yep, that's 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 been discussed as well. I, I think that's because there's no lighting there. I mean, if it was a well lit area, that would be one thing, but there's, there, it's yeah. dark as dark can be. Yeah. Um, and even in the daytime, as you're coming around Christian Lane, it's at some point you'll see it, obviously. But if you are also seeing the road narrowing, then we right. will automatically slow. Uh, it, my, my concern is as you're coming around the corner on Christian Lane, you're also looking, right. you're also looking down yeah, into the, to the right. to the down onto North Road, yeah. right, to make yeah. sure no cars are coming, so you're yeah. not looking here. Right. Yeah. So uh, it, that's one of my right. concerns that they have. Yeah. Um, they have a couple crosswalks further up the road. One across from the library. Um, one across from um, across from the town hall. Yeah. Um, what's being proposed for this for the for the parking area in front? is moving the driveway entrance to the north. Um, the driveway entrance? The current the entrance way. of the way, of the parking area in front of the Waitley Inn, Wait. moving it to the north. Could there's room, uh, there's room to the north where that no, could be expanded. So where that little crosswalk is labeled, it'd be the new entrance? Yeah. Yep. You see that it's really hard to read, but it says relocate driveway to north there. Yeah. I thought this was going to print out bigger. I just uh, wasted paper. But, uh, um, and that gives us more parking spots here. Uh, there will also be parking spots directly across. There's enough room, um, but the engineer didn't put those in because that's oh across inside of there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because th that's the resp that will that's that on the property of the way we in. Right. Um, and they're going to close off the access um, to that parking lot from Haydenville Road. Um, uh -huh. Chip was very supportive of that. I didn't know this, but cars will cars will speed through the parking lot yeah. to try to beat trucks that are. Right. on Hayden Road, and I didn't know that. So he was very supportive of that, and it allows him to modify his, his uh, accessibility ramp, and it will right. also allow him to put handicapped parking in right there. there. So we're actually looking at an increase in the number of parking spaces. Yeah, yeah, and he would still keep his parking lot that's kind of behind the end. That right. would have still have a separate Haydenville Road, but you can't drive through. Right. Right. And this would be a, not everybody can see, but that area that's being removed would be a, would be a grass would be a, a right. small green space. Now, has there been any thought to a crosswalk from somewhere in the Whaley Inn parking lot to wherever the Veterans Memorial will be? Because this crosswalk here is certainly to the north of the proposed memorial, like to right. some degree. Um, right. there we went back and forth on, end up, you know, right there and on where that well, crosswalk be, would be. be over. Yeah. Here. Oh. But, but people, People that either park here or there and across here, they're not going to do that, Jonathan. Uh, it makes more sense a shorter distance for people uh, to walk between the two parking lots. I'm not sure I, I, I it's necessarily... It's moving closer to the intersection. 
people aren't going to use that. They're going to still cross. Is it the Shum. memorial? Basically, so it's basically it's on the northern edge of the memorial yeah. now. Yeah, it but it's on the right. southern side of the town hall. Right. Well, I, so the I, crosswalk I, kind of services both users of town right. hall and users of the um, of the Wait memorial. Well, People go to the memorial. Right. Now, yeah, see, I'm not sure this is, is is this really to scale then because yeah, well, I don't know because the what's that? It's just forty. Yeah, I think so. Plus, if you're, you're closer to the intersection, well, it's yeah. more hazardous. For the, Right, because it looks like the sidewalk on the west side ends basically at the Waitley and parking lot. Yeah. Uh, unless there's some sidewalk over here by this crosswalk, but it looks like the crosswalk is going into some removed pavement, loam, and seed, so that it doesn't actually quite connect to that. It will, pavement. yeah. This uh, like there's like the, the drawing. See, it says it says this is really bad. Sorry oh. about that. It says new bituminous walk, new BIT walk. That's going to oh, go around okay. the curb there. Oh, okay. And then it's going to end oh, okay. where this. So, I just think that. I, so all of this is sidewalk. Uh, yeah. But it's going to be an asphalt sidewalk. I think I think most, most of this of will, is, will, is will be, be uh, bituminous, okay. yeah. Except for the stretch between the crosswalk and connecting to the town hall would probably be. Um, yeah. It'll probably be concrete to match the. Uh, Okay, you're so you're saying this part they just shaped, that's also so, uh, sidewalk. As it's currently drawn, yeah. Right. And that's not there now, but that would be right. sidewalk. We probably, we would like to, we'll likely put in curbing and uh, yeah. curbing to match what's there. Right, to, yeah. Now, then, but it, isn't yeah. the sidewalk extending all the way down to the church? Not, not, as, not, not the space one. It's, it's literally two. stopping at Haydenville Road? That's what we have funding for. Right, right. The, yeah. that would be the next round of funding. And then on the east side, it looks like the sidewalk goes uh, across the library driveway, uh, across da, 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 to here. Um, uh, I don't recognize which. Yeah, okay, so that would be the Smike's house. Then the you're Smikes. into the uh, parking lot of the town hall. Uh, and then, th so there's no sidewalk being built into the uh, Veterans Memorial area. It would it would terminate where terminate where, terminate where it currently is. It would terminate at where this where the sidewalk comes in perpendicular right. here. Yeah. It would end here. Yeah. Um, whatever happens with the veterans memorial, there hasn't been a lot of movement on that lately. Oh, okay. Because um, I know they talked about having paths through there and stuff like that. But yeah, and all the, all the designs. Yeah. Yeah. I still find it hard to believe that you can't put a sidewalk on the north on the south side of Haydenville Road going into the Veterans Memorial because people who are coming from the south they're not going to walk past the Wheatley Inn to the crosswalk I mean people aren't pedestrians aren't just coming from the north they're coming from the south and if, if, if funding comes up to Haydenville Road if we could put a crosswalk right to the north of Haydenville Road right into the Veterans Memorial Park. Yeah. That makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, the words right here say crosswalk with indicator panels. This. Yeah, I think words. This was originally here. Uh huh. Okay. And then there was discussions about where would it, where does it make sense from a safety standpoint, and where would the most people use it, and then it got shifted further down to the further up to the north. Are, are the indicator panels going to? So I, again, I, I think that should be there personally, but I'm also wondering whether the indicator panels are going to sort of take away from the historic aesthetics of. Yeah, I mean, so what I'm what I'm thinking about doing, what I've talked to Keith about, is we obviously need to to send this to the historic commission, historical commission, um, library trustees, and then um, the idea that we had is we would we would set aside like a two hour open house. We would have these blown up, mm -hmm. uh, maybe like 5.30 to 7.30 so people could go right after work or after supper. Uh -huh. And they could just come in and walk through and talk with us, give them sticky notes, they can put their comments on it instead uh -huh. of just one sort of, right, right. if you catch yeah. us for 10 minutes, you can know about the project. Can right. we have pictures taken or visible of the Indicator panels so people can see what they're going yeah. to look like. Yeah. I think well, we, that, do, that we can do all good. of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I like the idea of having having the uh, having it blown up really big and um, have you know take that match line and actually just make a big long 
yeah. thing along the wall that people can put sticky notes on and put their comments and right. Uh, um, so there is there is one other thing on this plan that that is new. Um, I don't know. And that, <laughs> good. Let's guess. Let's guess. <laughs> let's take turns guessing. <laughs> um, in front of the library, you see that there's there's a proposal um, that Keith would like to do. There's it says ten foot widening by others. Okay. See that? No. Along the road, along Chestnut Plain. Along yeah. Chestnut Plain Road. Okay. Oh, so that you have parking. Um, what what Keith is proposing is that it, they're also resurfacing. He also has on his calendar to resurface Chestnut Plain Road um, uh -huh. next year. Is that there be a uh, ten foot widening here um, along this whole stretch in front of the library that would allow for. It would increase parking. parking. Yep. It would increase parallel parking. There parallel was also parking. Right. parallel parking. There was a design. Well, they all, the engineer also looked at um, like sort of diagonal parking uh -huh. as you could pull in. Um, but this is what they settled on. I can't remember exactly the reason why. Yeah. Um, but what it allows is it allows an increase in parking, in this, especially parking during the winter. Because um, uh -huh. during the winter, there's no there's no spot to parallel park, so they they can't plow that area currently. Right. Um, so that's kind of a yeah. side component to this. Is this going to be sort of a virtual architectural rendering, or is this going to be this blown up? It's going to be this. There's no way we can have a this is what it's got a model of this is what it's going to look like. Conway School of Design had that. They had colored pictures. Well, with trees and cross sections and all of that. That models exactly this. Close to it. Yeah, we should we should have that then. People are going to want it. I don't. I have no sense of what town the center of town is going to look like looking at this. I would if there was a three D. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what. I think it should be expected. Otherwise, Sarah if I showed up, I have no idea what this is going to look like. I guess the, the other concern I had, and I think I shared this with, with Brian and Keith, is, is the sidewalk in front of the uh, library. I mean, right now, people park at the library or town hall and walk back and forth. And there's additional space in behind the library someday for future parking. And if we want that movement to occur, you're gonna have to, you're gonna, right now, the way it is here, people are gonna walk down the library driveway along Chestnut Plain Road and then up the hill back to the parking lot. I mean, it's kind of inconvenient to make them do that versus the existing, somewhere near the existing alignment. We own three of the four properties already that are there, other than, uh, I think, Melissa's house. And there could be a way of doing that. The, the Conway School of Design showed something going closer towards the library, and you also would facilitate that 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 movement between the two that's already occurring. Oh, you want like another path? Well, the instead of the, or instead of the one, I don't know how many of these parking spaces you're going to gain along along Chestnut Plain. What five or six, maybe the most. I mean, you could add them into a library yeah. parking lot if you wanted. At the same time, there's plenty of room behind the library for, uh, I'm guessing, 5, 10, 12 parking spaces. Behind the library? Yes. By the gazebo? Well, no, extend the existing. You need to redo the existing parking lot and maybe extend it. There's, yeah, I, 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 you, 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 can, you can do that. That was in, I think, Conway School of Design proposal even. Yeah, but I, I, personally, I'm not in favor of eliminating more green space for parking. Well, it's already clear. I, I mean, it's just grass here. Right? Well, just, but, but just grass. Grass I mean, counts as green. But, yeah. Grass is. Yeah, but them spaces you could very easily put behind a library. And I think to facilitate that movement, the way it is now, people walk on that <coughs> deteriorated sidewalk. So you're going to force them to go down the road, down that sidewalk, down the, down the driveway in the library, think about it. Walk along Chestnut Plain, go back up well, they don't have to, here, to, um, yeah. to, the, to the sidewalk here if they're going to they're going to park here or park over there. I think we're overthinking that people are just going to automatically make a beeline to the sidewalk well, where they park. Yeah, that, that, that happens. John. I they mean, there's two ways to get to the sidewalk. One is through the driveway, but one is right in front of the that sidewalk 
Well, goes in, I don't know. Right, that's, that's the library's front door sidewalk. Is that going to stay there or not? I don't know. I well, yes, it's a concrete walk. Is that going to stay there? Yes. I think uh, extend concrete walk to crosswalk. So the crosswalk lines up with the library's front door with that. That's right. the sidewalk right. that comes out. That would be here. It says right here. Yeah. Existing concrete sidewalk. Extend concrete sidewalk to crosswalk. So this goes all the way. Uh, so right now it only goes to the crappy sidewalk. Yeah. They say extend it to the good sidewalk. And or is the, is the grade future. there? The other thing is the grade there accessible? To extend that sidewalk? I think what we're required to do is follow existing grade in terms of ADA. Yeah, someone in a wheelchair may have to use the driveway because the grade would be much better on the driveway. Right. But yeah. they may have to do that to get to the ramp anyway. I mean, I think one of the concerns with I think the concern here was again with the with the tree roots. Yeah, well you could come closer to the to the library there to avoid some of the trees. But I mean isn't this all for public comment? I mean we can yeah, plus it would match up. I'll make those same comments at the yeah. town hall. I think uh, let's set a date and yeah. Yeah. and buy some sticky notes. Well, if, our, see, if I was to say if our sticky note budget is not yeah. completed, we could set right, a date indeed. and get and get the comments there, and I imagine there can be another round of, um, you know, given the, getting the feedback is really important, and then, so, All right, what's let's the see. timeline we need for this? Um, we want to do it, presumably, as, Christmas we as soon as we can, because then we need this to be ready to actually go in in the spring. What about Thursday the 28th of November? Um, I, I can be there. Well, you're going to be that day. I'm remote in. Okay. Uh, the 29th is uh, uh, I mean, I don't know one day, night of the week better than Rhode Island. Uh, December 11th is a Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm. That's uh, not a board of select. It would normally be a board of select yeah, meeting, but we split our meetings. Um, CPC's, CPC's got five o'clock. 17th has nothing going on. Well, I have something going on. Yeah, or the 12th yeah, has sure. nothing going on either. Yeah, I'm okay. Let no, the 12th, I've got a meeting. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, what time are we? Well, yeah, are you Frank, looking? Yeah, Franklin County Board of Select Minutes, the 12th. Yeah. Are you looking at certain hours? Right? Yeah. I, I was hoping to do 5.30 to 7.30. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't have to be there the whole time. Yeah, but we could hit. <coughs> Free dinner folks and Free dinner, yeah. dinner folks. So what are we looking at the twelfth then? No. Eleventh? Yeah, yeah, the eleventh and yeah. CPC can wander over after six o'clock. Yeah. Okay, so the eleventh? Yeah, we need the eleventh. Yeah. I guess sure. Okay. <coughs> Good with that. <coughs> okay. And is this is this officially a public hearing or is this a public comment? It doesn't work. Yeah, it's just a public comment. It doesn't have to be a official um, public hearing. But I'm thinking we'll have a scoop announcement. I think you should. I think the timing for that is great. And what are we doing? Five thirty to seven. I think five thirty to seven thirty. And that should be at the town hall. Yep. Unfortunately, it'll be dark. Light it up with close ups. Okay. Solar light. Yeah. And it's between 5.30 to 7. You'll put this on the town calendar. calendar. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Uh oh. <laughs> no. And I might not be there, but that's okay. I don't need to be. You might not be there. I may not be there, but, but that's fine. I, I, you, know, you can pre-write your stickies and you send right. your stickies, and I'll put them, put your name on, and right. stick them up there. Yeah, we'll give you your own color and bigger, so they stay in <laughs> those big ones. And written with the really thick crayons. Exactly. Okay. All right. Sounds like we can cross five P off the list. All right. Thank you. Very good. Uh, then uh, last item under old business is discuss a report on the feasibility of a shared. 
regional human resources staff person. So if you if you recall, yes. um, we signed on to this regional community compact grant to look at um, human resources staffing. Um, and the reports in here, um, but I don't want to go through it point by point. Um, but I'll tell you what the conversation that, I mean, really human resource staffing right now, or who does the, the responsibilities are split between Lynn and I. Yeah. Um, she does a lot of the benefit stuff, um, and hiring stuff, and personnel stuff I tend to do. Um, so our opinion is that um, it, we, we would benefit from, so what's mentioned here is this idea of a human resources audit. I think we would benefit from having a human resources audit to say, this is what you're doing right, this is what you're not doing so right, this is what you're not doing at all, and you can be doing it. Um, and that's really a project specific thing. Um, yeah. yeah, we could also use help, um, but it's also something that's been on my list for a while and I'd like to get to is in terms of updating the personnel bylaw. Or, Personnel policy, it's not really by law, it's personal we policy. Handbook. Um, and we don't have an up-to-date employee handbook, that's yeah. another thing. So that's really a project specific, two project specific things that need yeah. to get done. Um, but on, a, on, a, on an ongoing basis, we don't think there's a need to have a, a dedicated staff person. We have the need to, a question comes up, we want to be able to call somebody and say, hey, you know, this is our question, what's the right. answer? Kind of like counsel. Yeah, it's kind of like council, but they hopefully cheaper and gets back to you within two weeks. Um, so I think that I think that's what that would be most beneficial to the town. Um, but I don't sort of think that means a, a dedicated staff person. Um, yeah. So I don't. Yeah. Or even a shared or, or staff even person. Even a, a shared staff person because I, I just we just don't think that the need is right. is there. Um, and the place where there's more personnel is really the schools and the school department. Right. So and, yeah. the school district doesn't have any interest in. Yeah. So they do not, they, or they do. They do not at this point. Um, and they don't have their own HR person. Well, they. I think it's they do, but it's not a perfect. It's not a dedicated position. It's split yeah. amongst right. the right. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, Conway, I think wanted to move this forward. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if Deerfield's talked about it. Deerfield and Sunderland are both in transition periods without With, yeah. permanent town administrators. Um, I don't know what's what's going to what's going to go forward with this. Um, when I was talking with Lynn earlier today, we had talked about you know it almost seems like for our needs it, it's really project specific, and then after that it's it, it's almost like we if we could leverage you know, a human resources person that works for Northampton or works somebody competent that we think that works for East Hampton or, yeah. or somebody you could have a really a simple IMA that said in a musical agreement that says, you know, we can call you and you'll bill us you know X amount of dollars or something. But mm -hmm. I don't I don't know that we feel that it's necessary to go yeah. as far. But don't we have that option to call what, Boston or whatever? Uh, we can call town council. Town council well mm -hmm. No, I'll give you a, a case. I don't know, a few years ago, I had a question to Lynn about, I think it was conflict of interest or something. Yep, that's Related to that, and, and she true. gave me her, her answer, and she says if I wanted to talk further about it, she gave me a contact to call some office in Boston to do that. Yep, the ethics department has, ethics has department. an attorney. And, and I called, and, and right away I got an answer. They understood my questions, and I got the answer I wanted. Right. Same kind of thing that Lynn was saying, but... Right. She yeah. said, if you want to make sure, call them. So can't we do that on other HR stuff that comes up? Nope. Their, their, their advice to you is, is strictly related to the conflict of interest law. This conflict of interest? Oh, right. okay. So there's not a, a similar bureau that handles questions about employment law. Correct. So, yeah. Oh, okay. I wish there were. Um, it would be very beneficial to many communities. I wonder whether a, a law school has that function, though, somewhere. You know, um, Western Illinois Law School may have that function or something. Yeah. That, I'm just saying it's, a, it's an option for the resource that we agree we need. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think there's an Employers Association in the Northeast. Yep, there is. Um, that also exists. So I, I, 
Yeah. I don't Maybe feel like we need that. to create yeah. a new yeah. position to be able to find. I want to make sure though that the HR audit that I get is is a good idea, but it's not something that we absolutely will adopt every single one of their recommendations right. because there may be some suggestions that we say no we actually avoided ignored that on purpose nothing illegal though no not nothing illegal, illegal but, nothing regarding but, that's right that's right but legality and you know there are certain hr procedures oh this is the proper hr procedure okay well it's overkill or whatever it is right yeah so and, and I mean our HR is a little bit limited because we don't we're not dealing with any collective bargaining so yeah like yeah. some of the other towns are so I think we have even less yeah. needs so mm -hmm. okay. Except, yeah that's to good. the extent that the schools are part of our personnel but we don't handle the hiring and firing part of correct that so that's yeah, mm -hmm. one step but we are part of the collective bargaining obviously oh yeah we are and the collective bargaining is part of it, and, and there are potentially down the road HR things that could be part of collective bargaining. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's my take on the report. All right. Okay. Good. All right. Good. C is gone. Okay. Um, under new business part A to discuss and vote to adopt the winter parking restrictions. And you remind us that parking restrictions are about overnight parking. Yep. Correct? And that means I uh, couldn't park overnight in municipal lots. Yeah. Um, and there's an exception for the folks who live at Smike's house. That's, what we That's the only exception mm -hmm. I know about. Yeah. So there's no parking on, on streets or municipal parking areas. Right. In the past, it's been between midnight and 7 a.m. Um, I would recommend you adopt it effective immediately. Um, we've done it until April 15, 2020. <coughs> that goes without saying that if it becomes summer and February 1st that you can't act sooner. Um, and then you've talked last year about we need to make an exemption for the Spikes House or their guests in the designated spaces because they park technically in a municipal lot. So. Yeah. But is that Spikes House exemption, exemption just for those cars or if they have guests as well? Um, I would recommend that it apply, that, it, that the park restrictions not apply to residents of the Spikes House and their guests. Just the residents? The residents and their guests. A limit on number of guests? Well, I guess, I guess you could. Uh, um, I'm just. I mean, as a practical matter, how will it get plowed out if people are parked there? Um, it won't. It won't. Right. So I'm just, I'm just, hypothetically, if it's Christmas Eve and you decide to have 15 of your family over and you're going to have them stay, that's five cars, where are they? And it's still a foot and a half. And I mean, I, it's a practical matter, I think they would have to. Yeah. As a practical matter, I'll, if there's cars, I think Wayne waits to wait till they leave and then he yeah. plows. Um, but if they're overnight? He would have to wait yeah. till they leave. Yeah. Or could you, sit, could we set up, I, I know that if it snows a foot, I am, and I'm home, I'm looking out my window, and when the plow comes, I'm getting in my car and driving around the block three times so they can plow my entire driveway. I mean, you're, uh, that, that, that we're, that we're overthinking this. I think yeah. we just need to reinstate the, 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 sun, the winter parking yeah. restrictions with the exception of the uh, cars for the people who live at Smike's house and whatever modest number of guests they may have. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, we're almost at, we're almost to town administrator updates. We have two more items. Uh, to consider a request from the Waitley Snowmobile Club to use the former DeMaio property as a parking lot for club activities. Do I hear a motion? Yep, motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, okay. Uh, then the last item before town administrator updates is um, to discuss an emergency management planning grant agreement. Discuss and sign. So uh, I understand we get money if we sign this paper. Right. Okay, then. Um, <laughs> we got to make sure they're marked right. 
<laughs> so I know you will tell us about it. But I will. But I remember reading a bit about it in your. Uh, I think if you just want to sign that, not what I think I need to sign this. Okay. Um, so, um, Lynn, as the emergency management director, had an opportunity to apply for this EMPG grant, which is, I think it's 2500 So it's not a 2700 um, it's not a ton of money. Um, so she asked the department heads as to what they thought um, would be useful, and um, they thought having a uh, what's it called a variable messaging board yeah. Uh, yeah. would be very useful um, in emergency situations where you need to communicate um, to motorists, and also we use it at any time really if we need to communicate um, road closures or things like that. For instance, the um, the railroad cr crossing was closed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was a day or two. You yeah. know, you, you put that out on that road a couple of days, you know, a week before. We talked about this when they were talking about Northampton and the logging. Um, I was about to ask, is that started or is that over? I don't know, it has not started. Um, it's coming up. Yeah. Um, there was a shout out recently. I, I need to look at the um, So that's what, that's what, um, that money would be used for. Um, I don't remember exactly what the cost is, but I don't think it covers the entire cost. Um, I think okay. the idea is that there would be a, a matching capital you. request made uh, to cover the balance of it. Okay. Um, it could also be used sort of when that we had the tanker accident in '91, and we had Route Five was a parking lot. Yeah. And it it's not, doesn't need to be strictly related to a highway or anything. It could be. You could, you can put it anywhere and, you know, Advertise special the town, anyway, special town meeting, right, special town KK meeting, breakfast. whatever you can type and how many of the uh, characters are allowed. Uh, that's right. Uh, show and tell on the new sidewalks. Right. right. Click it or tick it, whatever yeah, you right. see. Um, but that's, that's the... Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's the, uh, the bulk of our agenda, so I understand there are some town administrators. Yes. <coughs> um, Center School Vision and Committee has met twice. Um, <coughs> and they've had good discussions. Fred has been uh, to both of the meetings. Um, so he can fill me in when I miss something. Um, we've had good discussions. Um, about the building and, and possible reuse. The committees received a, um, an estimate from Jones Whitsitt on uh, potential renovation costs um, if the building were to be renovated and brought up to code. And was, I think they was like just between 1.5 and 2 million, Fred. Right. Um, if it was uh, uh, commercial or residential or four units, right? Right. If it was, if it was purchased as a, a, a single residence, then there wouldn't be as much, uh, there wouldn't be as much cost. Um, so the committee's also gonna find, find out demolition costs. Um, it, I, I think the, they're trying to take a, a, a measured approach and get the information. Yeah. Um, in terms of sort of costs, in terms of measuring out what the options are. Um, there's a concern that they, that the two month when well, we asked them to report back in two months, the concern I think the consensus was that it was unrealistic uh -huh. um, of the committee. And they want a little more time. Uh, yeah, and I. I uh, well, we're not going to let them operate publicly. Oh. <laughs> um, I expressed I expressed to them that um, that we would probably yeah. bring back to the select board, and I, I think that the urgency is that I mean. If it's going to be disposed of, it requires a it requires town meeting vote. Yeah. Um, so I don't think we would want to extend it much past the annual town meeting because that's when we're going to get the largest number of people in right. action on it. Um, anecdotally, there's there's interest from multiple parties in purchasing it. People um, on the committee? No. Um, is it is it for commercial use or residential use or? Um, I think the ones that I've heard about are, are bed and breakfast type uses. Um, so essentially residential, but a, a small business. Yeah. Yeah. 
there, there could be from people on a committee. They're not, they're not saying so. It's too early. Right. <laughs> right. So, I mean, there is there, there was interest from the committee we met, uh, not we because I'm not on the committee, but I met, I would go to the meetings, um, interest in in putting an RFP out to see what, mm -hmm. to see what might be out there, what, what the interest really is. And there's interest in what conditions might be included in the RFP to um, mm -hmm. protect the building itself. There seems to be a lot of, there seems to be a lot of interest in the community about saving the building. Mm -hmm. um, but they're man they're managing that that gut feeling with reality checks as well. Right? Yeah, yeah costs, reality checks yeah. mean costs, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And and just demand. Right. Yep. Right. Um, there, I think uh, one of the members is going to be getting a is going to be bringing a realtor. Right. I think right. Yeah, they're, they're talking they're to a realtor to, the, uh, to walk through the building to see what's out there. Um, would I, I guess would it help to have someone from Mass Development come to an upcoming meeting just to be a fly on the wall, and, or no? Um, if they wanted to, if they could provide insight on uh, on what's realistic in terms of reuse of the building, maybe. Um, yeah, I think it might be more about gut feeling as opposed to no the, the, the other thing they're looking at is uh, doing a survey oh, yeah, right. of uh to town residents with about five or six questions and ask them oh. which options do you prefer or, or scoop deadline is coming up soon folks. they know that they're trying to get something they are not the survey but uh, uh announcement that survey will be coming or something like okay. that okay so, yeah, because yeah. it's like the uh, twenty. We haven't finalized what the survey would look at. They look I containers. Think. And it probably you know, and a week is going to be a weekend yeah. or eight days. And you don't want to do an electronic survey where people could use computers at the library if they didn't have access to them. Yeah, I think it would be electronic. What's well, that? It could be. Yeah, mo a survey monkey kind of thing. Yeah, I think there was talk. Yeah. But then somebody said, "Well, how do you know somebody won't do it twenty times?" There are ways to. Well, yeah, I think. You well, can. I don't know. This person that was doing it said it's hard to. No, there are track that. I, I don't know. There are ways to. There has to do that. Yeah, okay. Do that. Yeah, it just you have. That to was their concern. Yeah. Out. Right. yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, the meeting in December. The the meeting on regular uh, December. I think uh, they're meeting on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Okay. I mean, it's good to see that moving forward. Um, okay, so we got a little article in the scoop would be a good idea, uh, especially like a heads up if you're going to get this survey. Yeah, they were working on that. Okay, all right, and then whoever it is has my contact information so they can get it to me by the 27th. I want to make sure that they know I need it. The well, Judy, Judy was there and I. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, Judy's, Judy's yeah. back. She would, yeah. Okay. That, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Williamsburg Road Bridge project update. Keith and I have a call with um, Time Bond tomorrow at 10 um, to review or to begin to review the, the, the bid documents. So that's on schedule to um, uh, be put out the bid this winter um, and constructed in this spring when construction is able to be done, depending on the schedule of whoever the, the Contractors, but uh, that's long we've been talking about this. that's moving forward, and hopefully it will be hopefully it'll be done within eight months. Um, Whitley Elementary School energy efficiency upgrades. Um, I've been on a couple phone calls with Jonathan and some other members of the energy committee, and this is moving forward. The recommendations for the UMass Clean Energy Extension Report. Um, in terms of air sealing, um, uh, heat recovery, mm -hmm. ventilation, uh, new boilers, what else I'm missing? Pretty much it. Um, so that's, that's, there's movement on that. Uh, Two-year two project, probably. Yeah, the idea is that we, or the hope is that we would have all of our ducks in order to apply for Green Communities Grant, which is usually due in, in February. Okay. Um, so we're trying to get, get that lined up. And we're also dealing with, um, Berkshire Gas um, and whatever incentives that they can provide to us. We're also coordinating with Berkshire Gas and Eversource um, on that as well. So that's okay. moving forward. Um, 
the meeting on the there's the the, the solar meeting on the December third that we still need to put on the calendar. I've been working with Judy on that today actually. Um, and then we finally have free cash certified. You know, I think you guys have that in your packet. Yep. It's right around uh, just under six hundred fifty thousand dollars, I think. Um, so. And it is not subject to a feeding frenzy. Not subject to a feeding frenzy. So that's that's about all I have. Okay. Of course, we gotta stay tuned for yes. section nine, uh, number nine. So yes. we can't all leave yet. Right, but so um, any items not anticipated at this point? They were anticipated. We got them all. Okay, then uh, we need a motion to go into executive session. Right, yeah, we should so, read this and then um, roll call vote. So I'll, should we go to executive session per MGL section 38, sorry, chapter 38, section 21A, subsection three. To discuss strategy with respect to litigation, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body, and the chair so declares, I so declare, the board will not be returning to open session. <laughs>